There has been a lot of discussion about Mazda's forthcoming premium push with a whole bunch of new SUVs. But let's not forget that we still have the CX-5, which has been the brand's biggest selling car for such a long time. In fact, in Australia, this was our best selling SUV for seven years in a row until 2019. So this is really their core car for now, which is probably why it's the first one to actually get the new look that's gonna come on the CX-60. This second generation CX-5 here is not all new. It is basically an extensive midlife facelift of an already five-year-old car. But this CX-5 has had consistent updates every single year since it went on sale in 2017. So this car here, combined with all of those changes, means that the CX-5 is a prime example of constant evolution. Now, there are several visual details that have changed on this car. There's also a whole bunch of structural stuff done underneath to make it quieter, handle better, ride better, a few changes to the powertrain, and some tweaks inside. But overall, it's all about finessing the look of this model. This car here is a GTSP. And now before, it was kind of like the Acara, but with a few blacked out bits, but it does have a little bit more of its own personality this time. And the reason why we're focusing on these high-end models is that the Acara and the GTSP below it actually account for 45% of CX-5 sales in Australia, and the Turbo accounts for 21%. So that's a huge slug of this car's volume. And that means that these up-spec models really matter. Now, part of this 2022 change was about introducing some level of differentiation along these top level cars because they all kind of looked relatively similar other than the colors of their wheels. And so here with this new GTSP, we have the whole new front clip of the new CX-5 combined with a bunch of blackout details. So what we have here is essentially exactly the same mudguard as before, but we've got completely new lights, new front bumper bar, new grille, and a whole new look. These lights here with these little L shapes are meant to sort of link the CX-5 facelift in with the new CX-60 that it's coming at the end of 22. We also have this three-dimensional grille here with these sort of broader sections here that are in this sort of slightly metallicized dark finish in this GTSP, as well as the gloss black along the bottom. Completely different shape down here with a bit more chunkiness. Doesn't have those little spot fog lights it used to have here. It just gives it a little bit more visual presence at the front. As we go around the side, it's pretty much the same story as before, although we do now have gloss black wheel arches here. We have the same alloys that are on the Acara, the 19 inch ones, but they're black in the GTSP because that's what it's all about, blacking out stuff like the mirrors, like the window frames, like these gloss black sills and the same wheel arches around the back. The gloss black effect on the GTSP continues around the back here along this lower garnish on the rear bumper, which is a bit chunkier than before. This section here is a bit deeper. The rear exhaust outlets are a bit bigger and it just gives it a little bit more presence, even though most of the back of the car is the same. Like all of this stuff in the tailgate is the same. It just has new tail lights that extend in a bit deeper and have this cool little L-shaped motif that look heaps better than the one before, in my opinion. Let us know what you think. I also think that the GTSP looks better than the Acara because even though they're essentially the same car, they really are the same. The wheel design is even the same, but on the Acara, their gloss and all of the blackout stuff on this car is all one color. And I just personally think that's a little bit dated, but you might think that looks really classy. Certainly perhaps in the new Zircon Sand Metallic, which is the sort of the primer army khaki greeny yellowy thing, which looks nice, sort of. This Sol Red here obviously has been around for a long time and I think it really does look good on the GTSP. It matches with that cool little red garnish pattern in the front grille at the front there that's also done in a lime green accent in the new Touring Active model which sits below this. So there's sort of more differentiation definitely than before. Inside here it's pretty much the same story. The boot's still 438 litres according to Mazda which doesn't really sound that much, but I actually think it's quite a good boot in here. And it has, again, this really cool cover, like the old Mazda 6 wagon, that clips in, that means that the tailgate tonneau thing goes completely out of the way every time you open and close the boot. One of the neat features of the 2022 CX-5 is the boot floor. It can be on the higher level here, so your loading lip is flush all the way through to this 40-20-40 backrest, which you can clip here, and it goes dead flat. But you can also switch it, so it has this underside here that's just plastic that means that if you've got 
grubby cargo, you can do that. Or you can actually go a layer down and have it a little bit lower for a bit more depth, which I think is just a nice little bit of clever utility. Um, we've got a space saver spare underneath. This one with the Bose subwoofer in it, because that's a bloody good stereo that we'll talk about in a minute. Still have a 2000 kilo brake towing capacity in the turbo. Still have 200 millimeters of ground clearance with these 19 inch wheels. As with the outside, the inside of the 2022 CX-5 is all about finessing. In this GTSP, we no longer have those Maztecs, which means vinyl in Mazda speak, and Grand Luxe suede seats. We now have proper leather seats. These are essentially the same trim from the old GT model that doesn't exist anymore. It is just GTSP, which means it has the red stitching that the GTSP has like along the seats around here. We also have it along the armrest here. All the other stitching is all gray. I'm not quite sure why some of it's gray and some of it's red, but I'm not the interior designer here. It's definitely an improvement over before, especially trim-wise, but also seat-wise. Mazda reckons that these seats have been rebolstered, and they do feel like they've got a little bit more padding underneath your under-thigh section, and that the bolstering on the sides here is firmer. So in this and the Acara, the two models that I drove, it's definitely more supportive and better over longer journeys. They reckon that it's all about the S-shape in your spine. I just think it's just a more comfortable seat. You're sort of in the seat now rather than on top of it. The rest of the interior is again about finessing. The main changes in here is that this is the first CX-5 with wireless charging. The Acara and GTSP both have that. It sits just here, although it does take quite a while to charge, I'll be honest. This HVAC section here is also new. All new switches here. The seat heading has been moved into here. And if you have the Acara, you also have seat ventilation on the two blanks on the outside here that the GTSP sadly doesn't have also has steering heating, like steering wheel heating in the Acara, which is on the left-hand side for left-hand drive in a Japanese car, but at least it gets it. This GTSP doesn't have the wood that the Acara has. It has this sort of imprint material that runs across here and into the doors, but it all sort of fits the vibe of this being quite a sporty model, certainly as a turbo. The 10.25 inch screen here, which is adopted from the CX-30 originally, is in the two top specs as well. It combines with a 10 speaker, both stereo with 249 watt amp and a subwoofer, and it sounds, again, really great. It's kind of the reason why you would go to this top two level of cars, just to have that audio quality and the vastness of that screen. The normal Max, the entry level car, now gets an eight inch screen here rather than I think seven it had before. But even the Max, the absolute base model, has things like four auto up down windows, has auto folding mirrors, and it pretty much has every single safety thing that Mazda offers on the CX-5. So you're getting really good value in this 2022 car, which is what you'd expect when it's getting a midlife facelift like this. All these instruments here are new. It does have a very similar arrangement to the Mazda 3, meaning you can run through the info here and go through a bunch of stuff. It isn't Audi cockpit cool. It's sort of pretty simple, but it does look classy. There is nice graphics, all very easy to read. And the rest of the interior is kind of the same as before with a very slight tweak. Here used to be the little button for sport mode for the transmission, and it is now called my drive or MI drive, however you want to say it, which means it has normal sport off-road and towing modes rather than just sport for the transmission. So it actually changes the engine mapping, the throttle position, the steering weighting in sport, the ESC tune and stuff like that adds an extra layer of utility in a normal drive car like this. The other change inside the new CX-5 is new headlining, which Mazda says improves low frequency sound absorption by 10%. And it is a quieter car to be in. In the GTSP and the Acara, both of the headlining is anthracite, like dark colored, and we have this sort of small sunroof as standard. Finally, to storage, you can fit a pretty decent bottle in the door here. I've got this San Pellegrino here that goes there, and it fits in the two cup holders in the middle here. We have a padded center armrest here that doesn't slide as per before. It's got a little tray in here. It's got a pair of USB ports and a 12 volt outlet. And there's another 12 volt outlet down in the bottom of the center stack. The rear seat in the CX-5 is pretty much the same as before, which is no problem because it's still a really practical and usable car. And it has the same level of quality and fit and finish that the front of this car has. This is a really nicely built Mazda. The tops of the doors here are still a little bit padded, have that sort of gray stitching along there. We've got more red stitching along the sides of the armrest here. That armrest there in the door 
matches perfectly with the one in the middle here. So you kind of sit here nice and even in terms of the utility here. We've got a pair of cup holders and this little tray here, as per before, with a pair of 2.1 amp USB chargers. That's all nice and cool. This San Pellegrino bottle still fits in the door over here. So there's a little bit of door utility, which is not something you accept in all medium SUVs. And as for that, we've also got a pair of map pockets here and just a general reasonable amount of room. It's not vast like in say a Forester or some of the others, but it's not struggling at all. I've still got all this headroom above me, even with a sunroof. I've still got a reasonable amount of knee room behind myself and absolutely loads of foot room, as well as a seat that's actually quite comfortable. It's not perfectly deep. It's not as good as the new front seats, but it's definitely great in terms of what this sort of class tends to offer because not all the back seats in mid-size SUVs are good enough. The combined fuel consumption figure for the Mazda CX-5 Turbo is 8.2 litres per 100 kilometres. However, we averaged 11.4 litres per 100 kilometres. The warranty for Mazda in Australia is five years or unlimited kilometres, where the recommended servicing for the CX-5 Turbo is every 12 months or 10,000 kilometres, with its five-year 50,000 kilometre total reaching $1,805. Over the last 12 months, the median budget direct customer paid $911 to comprehensively insure a new Mazda CX-5. However, everybody's situation is different and your premium will vary based on things insurers take into account like where you live, whether you garage your car and your driving history. If you like this car, Chasing Cars can help you take the next step. If you'd like to organise a test drive of the new Mazda CX-5 or download a brochure, click on the link below the video. Now you might remember that I actually tested uh, CX-5 GTSP at the end of 2021, the previous model. So that's kind of why I chose this particular car here because it's so similar to before and gives me a nice benchmark of where we're at. We also gave the CX-5 an honorable mention in our SUV mega test because it is still such a good car. It is really surprisingly competent given that it's five years old. And in this Turbo One, as we we're about to discover, it still has all of that punch. Like it's, it's all about torque, but it's not slow. So the changes for 2022 are fairly considerable. Like you probably see us now bouncing over these undulations on a freeway in South Australia. And it's definitely a smoother car than it was on the 19 inch wheels before. It's smoother again on the 17 inch wheels that are still fitted to the Max and the Max Sport and the Touring and the Touring Active. So if you really value ride quality in your CX-5, they're the ones to choose. But 45% of people buy the top two specs, so this is probably where it needed the most help. It is about finessing the car though. It has some changes underneath the body to make it stronger. It definitely has some NVH improvements. There's some changes in the all drive system to make it a little bit more efficient, to make it work a little bit more positively. And we also have the drive modes here. We now have sport and off-road and towing as well as whatever. So in this car in particular, when you switch to sport mode here, it lights up the speedo in the middle in red. And it means that this will then hold a gear if I flatten it it'll add a nice amount of weighting to the steering, which is already nicely weighted. In fact, even the steering has been optimized to have a little bit smoother response, and it does feel a little bit crisper than before. The Sport adds a really nice amount of weighting in tight corners, and we also have a vibration damper in just in the petrol CX-5 models to smooth it out again. So the combination of all of these little changes here and there does make this a smoother, more refined, more rewarding car to drive because it already handled really well. There's also changes to the front and rear dampers and the size of the anti-roll bars. So the aim is to give a little bit more plushness while maintaining that level of positivity in the CX-5's handling. And I really think that it achieves it. It has a greater degree of fluency than before, but it definitely still handles precisely. It's a rewarding, fun car to drive. I reckon if you drove the 2022 CX-5 against the 2017 car, which to most eyes would seem virtually the same, it's the same dash architecture, it's essentially the same car, but all of those incremental changes over the years have made this Mazda so much better than it was at launch, where it was good, but nothing out of the ordinary. Now I think it's surprisingly good and really quite rewarding. The CX-5 has progressed to the point where even the $32,000 
Max, the base spec car that only 7% of people buy, already has so much of the safety equipment that you expect in these sort of cars. It has front rear AEB, it has rear cross traffic alert, it has lane departure warning, lane keep assist, radar cruise control, it now has pedestrian detection for the night time for the front AEB. It has all of that stuff and yet it's also surprisingly subtle and really easy to switch off and will remember that it's switched off. So it's just there and it works nicely. And I think that that combination of sort of usability and likability of the systems in the CX-5 sums up the car as a whole. This is not a brand new car, but it feels fresh and modern it has really good technology for something in 2022, even though it doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but it does have them and they are there. It's just the perfect example of honing a car over time to make it better and the end product something that's really likable. When it comes to the turbo petrol, it is the best engine in the range and with 21% of people taking it, it really does matter. However, the vast majority of people choose the 2.5 litre naturally aspirated petrol and it does now come with cylinder deactivation. And even though its combined fuel consumption figure isn't really that much better than the turbos, I think in the real world, the 11.4 that we averaged in this car, which is pretty much the same as we averaged last time we tested it, is sort of proof that if you use the turbo torque in the turbo, you're gonna be using fuel to achieve that. Whereas the naturally aspirated 2.5 can be surprisingly economical. The turbo here has had a few changes too. It has a larger silencer shell for the engine. It's had a change in the spare wheel pan in the back. It's also had some exhaust changes to make the exhaust quieter, but it still has a little bit of rot in the engine. And I suppose that sort of nicely subtle spritzer of driver appeal is something that is endemic in the Mazda CX-5 these days. And that's kind of why I secretly love it. Thanks to the constant updates done by Mazda on the second generation CX-5, this was already a really nicely finessed car. But the things that really needed attention, in my opinion, is pretty much what's been addressed with this extensively facelifted 2022 model. It has more presence at the front, it has more presence at the back, it has more model differentiation, it certainly is quieter than it was before, it rides better on these 19 inch wheels, it has better front seats, it has a little bit more technology, and it just looks a little bit more cool. And so combine all that with all the things that the CX-5 already did really well, especially the performance of this turbo model, its handling, its driver appeal, and its general utility, and I suppose even its resale, like people love the Mazda CX-5, what's not to like about the 2022 model? It's still near the end of its life, it's probably only got two or three years more to go before an all new generation will be launched, but for a five year old car with just a lovely once over like this one here, it's a really, really good thing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment on what you think about the 2022 Mazda CX-5 or on chasing cars. Thanks for watching.